الحمد لله حمد يوافي نعمه ويدفع نقمه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ثم أما بعد We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us with an objective or for an objective which is to worship him subhanahu wa ta'ala objectives is what really drives us in our lives to do things generally if you go to school you have an objective to study something and based on that objective you work hard or you don't a person who has an objective and knows his objective or her objective would do everything to accomplish it and in the process of accomplishing your objective normally difficulties are there but the person who is focused does not think of the work and how tired he or she gets and the difficulty when you have a focus on something you forget yourself and you forget the pain and the suffering because your mind is not thinking about that a person who thinks like Ramadan is coming a person who thinks about when iftar is will suffer the most because it seems like time doesn't move you get off work and you still have another three four hours to go before you break your fast but a person who just know that this is the way it is whether I think or I don't think it's gonna happen I'm fasting alhamdulillah let me run my life and start focusing on other things because his objective is already known he will not suffer Prophet Musa alayhi salam gave a speech and it was powerful to the point the people were amazed and they came to him and when was asked who is more knowledgeable than you so Prophet Musa alayhi salam doesn't really know anybody that knowledgeable so he said nobody Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blamed him for that you should say Allahu A'lam because just because I don't know somebody smarter than me or more intel more knowledgeable than me in Irving doesn't mean he's not in Dallas so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him there is somebody more knowledgeable than you Prophet Musa alayhi salam wants to prove his dedication for seeking knowledge and he's not or he wasn't arrogant when he said nobody just he doesn't know so look what he said in Surah Al-Kahf لا أبرح حتى أبلغ مجمع البحرين أو أمضي حقوبة I am well Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him where that knowledgeable person is and Prophet Musa alayhi salam wants to learn from him so he said I'm not going to stop searching for him until I get to the exact place where he is even if I walk for centuries or for years and years he has an objective to meet so he traveled and guess what he has a sign where that person is which is a fish in a bottle whenever that fish leaves that's where the man is well the fish left and the servant of Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam uh, saw it but he did not tell Prophet Musa alayhi salam so they kept walking what did Prophet Musa alayhi salam say give us some food because I'm really getting tired well if 
you have an objective, you should not get tired. Because you're not thinking about tired and pain. But guess what? He already passed his objective. He got tired and felt tiredness after he passed. And that's why his servant said, do you remember when we sat next to that rock to rest? Hmm, that's where the fish left, I forgot to tell you. The shaitan made me forget. So you get from that, that he felt the tiredness after he already accomplished his objective and even passed it. Any time you live your life with a goal, you don't get tired especially for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu continued to do qiyam, his feet swelling and cracked. And he didn't stop from making qiyam. Aisha radiallahu anha was telling us what happened to him. And it didn't say like, oh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu used to do Qiyam, then because his feet swelling, he stopped doing Qiyam. She didn't say that. She said he continued on doing Qiyam until I can see his feet such as such. When you work for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the pain will have a sweet taste to it. Because it is for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That's why you find the believers when they are tested with trials, and the trials normally painful or sad or any of that, you find them patient and you find them, even it gives them more Iman and more support because they know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing them. And this is coming from serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which means serving the one they love, and that's a pleasure. So Prophet Musa السلام, put that objective in his mind. He wanted to see that man. And he went. And he met him. And he felt the tiredness after he met that service. I mean, after he accomplished the job. So whenever you have a goal in your life, know for sure that if you are focused, you will not be thinking about how hard the job is. People who want to become doctors, for instance, they go to يعني, tough universities and they abandon their families and their friends and their desires and everything and they go after it and I would say 99% of those who go there finish successfully. Why? Because they're dedicated for it. Once you enter it, you know what to expect. You are created and you know what you are expecting. You know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you and you know why you're here. So you're not going to give up simply because someone is inviting you uh, to their house or to their party. You're not going to skip the salah simply because uh, you're tired or simply because uh, water is difficult or it's cold or uh, somebody is watching or I am embarrassed or I am shy or I am scared all of those things may hinder you but they will not stop you because you have a goal and your goal you're focused on it and that's why I always يعني, expect us ourselves myself and you to always know not just know the ayah really think about it think about it your whole existence is for that yani I, I was reflecting on an ayah yesterday in surah al-isra the saying of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
من كان يريد العاجلة عجلنا له فيها ما نشاء لمن نريد If your desire is to take this dunya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you the choice you want this dunya or you want the hereafter If you decide you want to take If you decide you want to take the dunya look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said will advance for you what we want to whom we want. You would think that you accomplished your objective. You did not. You got what you will get if you sought the hereafter. Because everything is written. So you picked dunya over the hereafter and you got nothing extra more than what is written for you. But if you focused on the hereafter, you got the hereafter and you got what is written for you in this dunya. That's what people don't get when they involve themselves in haram. You can get your money through a haram job and you can get the same amount of money through a halal job. One person was saying the other day, oh, <clears throat> you know, uh, the reason I did not make money because I did such and such in my business. I took the haram out of it. And I said, what a horrible understanding of your religion. You mean to tell me that because now you're obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're not becoming rich, but if you continue on disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be rich and you get more? What kind of an understanding is now they're using it, they're saying that in a positive way. It's like, you know, uh, he would have done better if he, uh, actually, some person was dealing with cars. If he start dealing with a bank and financing, his business will boom. But because he didn't do that, he's not doing well. I said, Subhanallah. It, it, w since when the barakah is by the number? Since when, if you have six kids, you're living better than a person with one child? When you might have six kids, they're living the most miserable part of your life and the person with one child the happiest the person with an average job living better than the person who has 10 times more where is the blessing where is the barakah where is the good feeling where is the tranquility where is the serenity that you get from dealing with halal going to sleep knowing your money is halal you are with the protection and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where is all that feeling uh, go for for people who don't reflect on that you deal with halal you're gonna feel good and you're gonna have more because it's not going to be more than what it's written but it will go longer than what it's written this is like you focus on dunya you're gonna get what is written for you the hard way focus on that the hard way but if you want the hereafter You'll get what's written for you in dunya the easy way. You run from dunya, where are you running? To the hereafter, dunya follows you. Wait for me. I have something to give you. The other way around, <clears throat> you run from the hereafter, <clears throat> you're going to keep running after dunya, and dunya is running away from you and say, hey, please wait for me. That's what you find people do it. They work two jobs and they're not catching up with their bills. Why? Because they forgot the hereafter. Their focus is not the hereafter. So I conclude, make your focus the hereafter. You live easy and happy. Know your objective. You will not get tired. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu alaik. Assalamu alaikum wa